to start with that performance 4-1 to Aston Villa and credit where it's due a fantastic performance by them they look a team really really in form and a team hitting form at the right time for the promotion places and I think even though the gap is still seven points and I did talk about this yesterday in my video that still seven points I mean the games that we've got left to play I still feel confident that we will do it but there is that element of doubt now that we need to get six points from the next two games to make sure that we're okay Villa, I thought, completely controlled the game. They, they, there was a slight spell where I thought in the second half of the first half that they were tiring because they'd come out of the block so intensely and so quickly. But I think it was just the game plan from Steve Bruce and, and Villa carried it out very, very well. They, they slowed the game down. They, didn't, they weren't panicking like you know, other teams have done. And they showed that if you can keep Wolves at bay... Cause, <laughs> That we didn't create anything today. I think we were really, really poor going forward. Um, I don't remember their goalkeeper making a single save. And particularly in the second half, it was just an onslaught from Aston Villa. And the three goals that they scored in the second half were poor defensive errors, again, which we've seen a number of times in the last couple of weeks. When our defence is put under threat, they have crumbled. And Danny Barr today, having praised him on Wednesday for his performance against Leeds, was poor today. His distribution out of the back was not effective. We were result, you know, resorting to long lump balls from him, which we haven't seen all season. We've seen careful and considered play out of the back. We lacked that today. And then he picked up a yellow card really early on in the game and therefore was not able to challenge as ferociously as he had to in a Midlands derby like that, which I think eventually did cost us the game. I think John Ruddy was poor again today. I think the first goal, we can't really legislate for that. He's on the floor and it trickles underneath him. That's you know unfortunate. Uh, but the fourth goal, definitely he should have, uh, I think, done better at that with his near post. A little toe bunt from the edge of the box. You know, Top championship goalkeeper should be making saves like that. Not that it mattered at that point. I don't think you can blame the referee. I think... I know that he was at fault for the second goal of Villas and Wolves should have had a penalty by all accounts. Ruben Neves then berated the referee for about half an hour afterwards as well, constantly honoured him. And that would have made it 3-2 with 15 minutes to go, which could have changed the, the tide of the game. But I think the die was cast at that point anyway. And we've got to pick ourselves up from this. It's a really important week now with uh, Reading and with Burton to come at home. We haven't had a home game for a long time. And I think... We've got to get behind them. I think we've got to stop stop singing Mind the Gap. We've got some absolutely idiotic fans who were still singing it at 4-1 down. The the line, it's getting bigger every day. Well, it's not now. We're really, really struggling. Our backs are against the wall. And we've, we've got enough games to play. It's still in our own hands. We've got a lot of top quality players that have shown over 30, 30 games, 35 games, that they've been they're, they're good enough to get promoted. But... The championship's a difficult division to get out of. It's unforgiving. 46 games is a long, long time. And when you've got players like Ruben Neves, who only played a handful of games last year, inexperienced players, you know, we've got Colin Cody as our captain, who's 25, 26, hasn't got promoted before. Things like this start to creep in. We need players like John Ruddy and uh, Willie Bolly, Roger Miranda, who've been there before, who've done it been around for a while to step up and to really lead the team now for the rest of the season. Um, Nuno as well, I think, fell short a little bit today. He Taking Cavalier off when he did, I think he was... He, he didn't have his best game today, but he still was... When he's on the pitch, you you know, they've got the player who's involved in the most goals in the division. You've got to have some outlet, and a phobie didn't provide that when he came on. Costa didn't play well when he came on either. It was, I think, definitely our worst performance of the season. And there is a slight reason to be worried. You know, I remember talking to Gully from Molyneux Musings uh, at Christmas time. He said that, you know, for Wolves to not get promoted from this point, that somebody was going to have to beat our form from the first half of the season. And the thing is, we've now got Dar uh, Cardiff who are doing that Villa who are doing that and Fulham who are doing that as well so we need to just have one more push one big run 
and that'll see us over the line. We're on 76 points with 36 games gone. We've got 10 games left, 30 points to play for. But there's no way that we're going to win all 10 of those games, but we need to win half of them to, to definitely get promotion, I think. 90 points will still be enough this season, although saying that, it's not definite the way that things are looking at the moment. But I still don't think there's any reason to panic. I was expecting a defeat today, to be honest. Not as emphatic as it actually was in the end. But Wolves have got a long way to go and a lot to learn still in the Championship. And hopefully, you know, next week we'll be talking about six more points. We'll be closer to that point, closer to the promotion. Uh, but it's, it's not done yet. And we can't, as fans, expect it to be done. The media, I think Tim Spears can be a little bit... Um, <laughs> Tim Spears, is, you know, announcing promotion a couple of weeks ago and stuff like that, saying that nothing can go wrong. But it's, we've been here before. I think I've heard, you know, I've compared it tonight now to two other previous defeats. Uh, 2002, this weekend, we lost to Albion. And that's when the tide started to turn in that season. And we lost to Blues around about Easter time in 2009, where we learned from it and we kicked on then over Easter and, and made sure that we crossed the line. So, again, we've seen reactions from defeats. We haven't seen two defeats in three games this season, so we've got to learn from it, we've got to come back. But hopefully, Nuno, his backroom staff, the players, get in training tomorrow, get practising, get working hard, and react to this difficult situation. Let me know your thoughts of today's game. I thought, credit as well to Aston Villa fans, very intimidating atmosphere. As an away fan who's been to most of the away games this season, that's the first time I felt a little bit, you know, intimidated in an away ground. And I don't think we get that at Molyneux either. I don't think we can create that noise. And Aston Villa are, are a top Premier League club. They should be a top Premier League club, uh, I should say. Um, and they need to get back there as soon as possible. And the next 10 games for Aston Villa, of course, are massive. And I could easily see today's fixture being a Premier League fixture next season but the race for, for promotion is certainly on now between about four teams for the top two spaces and we're in that race we, we haven't run away with it at all thank you very much for watching don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and don't panic still I think if we lose games next week then it's time to panic see you